played. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. All right, we're going to begin this hour with something I've been wanting to talk about for a while now, political advertising. You may have seen this new online ad from Missouri U.S. Senate candidate Eric Greitens. Take a look. It shows the former GOP governor holding a gun and supposedly hunting moderates in his own party, calling them rhinos. That would mean uh, Republicans in name only. Facebook has banned the ad and Twitter flagged it for abusive behavior. But guess what? If his campaign was to buy commercial advertising slots on local TV, an industry expert tells us that CBS news stations would have to air it. And that is for sure true when it comes to lies. Several candidates in other states have already used TV ads to repeat false claims of fraud in the 2020 election. And now you might think that broadcast stations like this one could reject such outright lies. But in fact, we have no choice but to air them no matter how blatant or misleading. Be advised. The liberal pro-Biden, pro-China Wall Street insider. Every election year, it seems like politicians hit us with a one-two combination of spin. Alex Mooney repeatedly disrespects veterans. And scorn. Reckless, dangerous, and irresponsible. It's all part of a long tradition of using the public airways to persuade, and you might even say manipulate, American voters. Three, two, one. While your regular, everyday commercial advertisers can sometimes face allegations of stretching the truth, you'll get the best 5G network. They're at least required by federal law to back up their claims with facts. You should know those rules do not apply to political candidates. Don't assume that the political ad that you hear contains true information. Joseph Watson guided the George W. Bush administration on telecommunications policy and is now a professor at the University of Georgia. So a serial company can't lie about their serial, but a candidate can lie about their politics. That is absolutely true. And lately, he says the lying has gotten both bolder and more frequent. It has not been historically as much of a problem prior to 2016. I would say after 2016, the world has changed a lot. Watson points to commercials like this one from President Biden's 2020 campaign. If Trump gets his way, Social Security benefits will run out in just three years from now. It earned four Pinocchios from the Washington Post fact checker, a rating reserved for Whopper. The thought of Americans who are living on fixed incomes thinking that's going to go away is terrifying. Yeah. And here we have that lie approved by Joe Biden. Absolutely. Yeah. But of course, not all lies are created equal. And this election cycle, there's one lie above all the others. We won by a lot, not just a little bit. We won by a lot. A lie that stands out in terms of sheer repetition. Blue state liberals stole the election from President Trump. I'll make sure our elections are never stolen again. The amount of misinformation we're seeing in a midterm cycle is more than I've seen in the past in a presidential election cycle. Wow. That's what concerns me about 2024. If this is what the midterm looks like and the ads are this aggressive uh, and contain so much misinformation, what is it going to look like in the 2024 presidential cycle? So why, you may fairly ask, would television stations air campaign commercials we know to be wrong? If you're watching this ad right now, it means you're in the middle of watching a fake news program. The answer is we must. And if you don't believe me, here's Bill Whittle, who oversees advertising for our affiliate WFSB in Hartford, Connecticut. Have you ever rejected a political ad? No. I haven't. In how many years? 20. He showed us how he reviews ads from political candidates. And this is where I watch the spot to make sure that there it conforms it to the rules and regulations. We notice there is an option to reject the commercials, but not for lying. They have to say it's paid for by. The candidate has to use their name and it has to be on the screen uh, for at least four seconds. Everything else, fair game. Pretty much. The rules were set almost 90 years ago by a law that states broadcasters have no power of censorship over any legally qualified candidate for office. And it requires stations to offer their lowest available rates ahead of an election. Is it ever frustrating knowing that you have to press play on an ad that you has falsehoods in it? Yes, yes, it is, definitely. Does that cause any trouble for the station? You get phone calls about it? We get a ton of calls. Two, one. And take it. In addition to accepting candidate ads, broadcasters must run them without edits. 
Although, as Watson sees it, there is maybe one potential option for stations interested in flagging ads from candidates. They could put a disclaimer at the start of an ad that might say, you know, the following is a paid political advertisement that may contain um, information that's not been verified or validated. Um, there should be no preclusion to do that. But the, the challenge for broadcasters is any disclaimers that they put at the, at the start of an ad can't be paid for by the candidate. I don't see them doing that. No. <laughs> what about uh, allowing media companies like CBS and the other big broadcasters to step in and reject ads that are false? Who watches The Watchmen? Who watches us, you mean? So if you empower a government body to police the truth, that's problematic. If you empower media companies to step in and filter the ads, that's problematic. And so we're left with what we have. That's exactly right. Uh, there really are no easy solutions um, to resolving this issue, and that's why it's such a conundrum. No easy solutions. People are only restrained by their own sense of shame. And we should mention that 1934 law applies only to broadcasters on public airwaves, so not cable networks, not social media companies. They are free to remove or reject misleading political content. I wanted to do this piece because I hear from people online of course. who are saying, how dare CBS air that ad? You know there are lies in it. We don't have any choice. It's the law. This is fascinating. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. And it's yeah. eye-opening, but I have a couple of questions. One... Who watches The Watchmen? Yeah. And, and and I might be asking myself that, looking in the mirror yeah. reflection. But then this Communications Act of 1934, has there been efforts to change it? And is there a slippery slope if you do? Yeah. Like how do you determine what's a lie? Isn't that the big question? It, the only option, I think, would be to take the political uh, law from 34 and apply it to cable and online, which would just increase the platforms for ads. Uh, mm. It would mean that everybody has to accept everything. The tragedy and the triumph of America is that there is no ultimate backstop to preventing political political lies, except for the American people. The yeah, American but the people. candidates Trust know, one another. But Tony, the candidates know they're putting on stuff that 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 is a lie. Yeah. So when they say, my name is Tony DeCopo and I approve this ad, that means that they've means approved it. They've approved the they've lie. Approved they can say anything they, they put the their lie. name on it. They put their name on it. It's yeah. the only requirement. And they used to be restrained by shame. But shame, shame is a thing yes. from the old days, yeah. apparently. Yeah. 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 Shame right. doesn't, good. is not a deterrent anymore. Nope. All right. Coming up, Marvel actor Simu Liu. He talks about growing up as an immigrant from China and the acting bug that his parents wanted to stamp out. But first, 